Hi, good morning and welcome to today's class. Today's class is a continuation of our JSS1 mathematics class on plane shapes. Last week, we were able to train the first objective on plane shapes, which says identify lines and angles. And we dealt precisely with the different kinds of lines. We have a straight line, we have, we have the parallel lines, and we have the perpendicular lines. We also went further, further to look at angles, where we talked about acute angles, which we say are angles that are um, less than 90 degrees. We also look at a right angle, which we say is an angle with 90 degrees. We also look at, um, we made mention of obtuse angle, which we said obtuse angles are angles that are greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. We went further to look at angles on a straight line. We could say angles on a straight line are angles of 180 degrees. Thereafter, we look at reflex angles, which we said are angles that are greater than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees. An angle at a point, we say is an angle of 360 degrees. That was what we did at our last class. In today's class, we'll be looking at identification and how to draw regular and irregular shapes. In today's class, you should be able, at the end of today's class, you should be able to identify that this is uh, a regular shape and this is an irregular shape and how to differentiate them. So, we shall be looking at identifying plane shapes. But what do we say are plane shapes? Let's come to look at it. We said a flat surface, such as the top of a table, a plane field, the ceiling, the walls, face of your exercise book or your textbook, and the face of a chalkboard. All these are referred to as a plane. It is a plane because it is two-dimensional. That is, it is, it is measured in only two directions, be it length or breadth. So we refer to any two uh, dimensional surface as a plane surface. Figures that could, that could accurately drawn on flat or plane surfaces are called plane shapes. So let's look at examples of plane shapes. Examples of plane shapes include one, I say a rectangle, two, a square, three, a triangle. We have four parallelogram, five trapezium, circle, polygons, and so on and so forth. All these shapes are referred to as regular shapes. That is, they have definite length and breadth. So a shape that has definite length and breadth, we refer to them as um, regular shapes. There are also irregular shapes. That is, they do not have definite length and breadth. And we refer, we have examples as leaves. So all these are examples of irregular shapes because they don't have definite length and breadth. So this is an irregular shape. This is a leaf. It's an irregular shape. This is another irregular shape. And this also. So, our area of concentration today is on regular shapes. When we are done with regular shapes, then we will begin to talk of irregular shapes. So let's start with the first example of uh, plane shapes, which we say a rectangle. Now, 
A rectangle is a two-dimensional shape. For example, this is said to be a rectangle. It has a length and a breadth. Let me call this A, B, C, and D. So, length BD, which is also parallel to length AD, is referred to as the length, and also length AD, which is also parallel to length CD, are equal. So, this is a rectangle, and this two is said to be the breadth of the rectangle. Now, how do we identify a rectangle when you see it? See it? A rectangle is a quadrilateral. We refer to it as a quadrilateral, meaning a four-sided shape, which has two opposite parallel sides. This is parallel to this. Line AD is parallel to line um, BC. So these two are said to be parallel lines. As well as line a, AB is also parallel to what? Line CD. So we refer to it as uh, a rectangle. That is one of the conditions for a rectangle. And also, the angles, it has four sides. Four edges. One, two, three, four. And the angles on each of the edges is said to be of 90 degrees. That is, it is a right angle. And also, the diameter BD and AC are said to be equal. And also, the angle, the um, two diameters intersect or bisect themselves at the middle. And at that middle, we also have 90 degrees formed. This angle is also said to be 90 degrees. This angle is also said to be 90 degrees, while this is also said to be 90 degrees. So, this is a rectangle. And one of the striking features of a rectangle is that the length is always different from the breadth. It's either the length is greater than the breadth or the breadth is greater than the length. But both are not equal. That is a rectangle. Let's look at the next, which we say is a square. A square can also be said to be a four-sided shape, a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. But what's the difference between a square and a rectangle? In a square, side B, C, is equal to side CD and is equal to side AD which is equal to side AB that is all four sides of a square is said to be equal they are all equal which we can represent this way and also it has Two diagonals that also bisect themselves at the middle or at the center of the square. And each of the angles suspended at the middle is said to be 90 degrees. So note, a square is a four-sided shape with four sides equal and has 90 degrees on each of the edges of the four edges the only difference the difference one of the differences between a square and a rectangle is that 
a square has all four sides equal, why a rectangle has two parallel sides that are equal and all four sides are not equal. Next is a triangle, which is also an example of a plane shape. A flat surface with three straight sides is known as a triangle. This is what we mean by a triangle. A flat surface with three straight sides. This is side A, B, C. So it has three sides. Side A, B. This is side A, B. This is side uh, B, C. And this is side A, C. So if you see any shape in this form, it's referred to as a triangle. And also we have different types of triangles depending on their sides and angles. We have what we call an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is a triangle with all sides and all angles being equal. What I mean by that is this. This is an example of an equilateral triangle and this is how it is represented. Equilateral triangle A, B, C. It is said to be an equilateral triangle because all three sides are equal as well as all angles are equal. Its internal angles are equal. And in fact, they are said to be 60 degrees. This is 60, this is 60, and this is 60. And remember that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And like the name implies, or the name is gotten from the, the features of the triangle, equilateral triangle, that is equal, gotten from the word equal, okay, equal, equal from the word equal. Number two is isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides equal. These two sides are equal, A, B, C, and its two base angles are also said to be equal. That is, if angle A is X, angle B will also be X. So this is an example of an isosceles triangle, and it is represented this way. We also have a scalex, scalen triangle. And a scalen triangle is a triangle that no two sides or angles are equal. That is, this side is different from this side and is as well different from this side. So no two sides are equal or angles are equal. They are all of different dimensions and we refer to them as scaling triangles. Also, triangles can also be named according to their angles. We have acute angled triangle which we say each of its angle is less than 90 degrees. For example, if I have this triangle A, B, C of, let this be, let this be said to be 60 degrees. This can also be said to be uh, 70 degrees. While this can be said to be, uh, this should be 50 degrees. Now, why is it called an acute angled triangle? Remember, at the introductory class, I told you that an acute angle is an angle that is what? Less than 90 degrees. So of these three angles, they are all less than 90 degrees. So this is referred to as an acute angle triangle. Reason being that no, none of its angle is uh, up to 90 degrees. They are all less than 90 degrees. Also, 
we have obtuse angled triangle. And it's said to be, it's said, and, and a triangle is said to be obtuse angle when one of its angle is more than 90 degrees. For example, we have this. If this is said to be 120, while this is said to be 40, then this is said to be uh, 20. Now, because one of its angle, angle 120 or angle A, is said to be an obtuse angle, where one of its angle is more than 90 degrees. Also, we have a right angle triangle where one of its angles is equal to 90 degrees. And this one is popular, mostly known by all, where one of its angles is 90 degrees. And it is written like this. So this is said to be a right angled triangle. ABC. Okay. Let's take some exercises now to wrap up this session of today's class. Question 1 says we should give five examples of objects that are rectangular in shape in the class. Um, example of rectangular objects in, in your class, you have the face of the board, the chalkboard, is rectangular in shape. What else? The top of the deck is said to be rectangular in shape where you keep your books. Um, so we we'll call it, say, desktop is rectangular in shape. Your teacher's table is rectangular in shape. Um, that's three. What else? Uh, your exercise book is rectangular. The, the face of it is rectangular in shape. That's a textbook or your exercise book is um, rectangular in shape. Um, what else? We have... Um, uh, you can name as many as possible. Let's example two, which says... Give five examples of objects that are square in shape at home. Uh, let me see. Um, if you have a decoder, um, a Go TV decoder at home, run now and check and see. You discover that the top of it is square in shape. Um, what else? What else? An example of the light I'm using. This face is said to be um, is it square? Yes, it's said to be square in shape. Why square? Because all four sides are equal. Question number three says uh, okay, we, we answer question number two. Question number three says give two real objects that are irregular plane shapes. I'm scared. Irregular plane shapes. Okay, I have some here for you. This, the surface of this, the face of this, of this fake at home, you have it at home, is an irregular shape. Um, your scissors is an irregular shape. What shape can you call this? So this is an irregular shape. You have um, an opener is also irregular in shape. You have hmm, a spanner is also irregular in shape. This is also irregular in shape. Ah, I don't know what they call this. But the, the, the our mothers can tell us more of this. It is irregular in shape. Why are they irregular? Because they don't have a definite length or breadth. And also, we still have more. All these are said to be irregular in shape. Why your mirror 
can be said to be a square. Okay. Okay. Before we go, before we go, let's do this. That you should name the following plane shapes. What do you call shape A? What do you call shape B? And shape C. Thank you for being part of this class. In today's class, we have been able to deal precisely with the second objective which centers on identification and drawing of regular and irregular shapes. So we have dealt precisely with this. Thank you very much for being part of this class and I hope to see you some other time. Goodbye and God bless.